All right, I guess we're live enough, mostly. And I have to pause the other window. Blah, 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 blah. Should be any minute now. Any moment now. Come on. Should start playing. There we go. All right, now we're done. Okay. Well, technical things. You try to do everything ahead of time, but they just don't let you. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, subjects. Um, well, Hockley, partly, I suppose. We could always do that, right? Because he's just so damn annoying. But then that just becomes an issue of annoying people. Trolls and fucktards and it's not really the argument then, it's just the argument about having an argument with people who can't have a rational argument about anything, ever. So, that's how much of a subject, really. Um, but the issue of this uh, gravity thing um, did come up, I guess, in a way that, you know, I, I mean, a more simple description, I suppose, I could figure it, I figured out I could draw a more simple description, um, you know, what the problem is, and uh, how, you know, how to understand the inverse square problem, and uh, so, probably not a very good drawing, but we'll have to do. Um, so you can see like the little circle and the little dot and then the bigger circle and the same little dot. And you could kind of understand that the little circle as a percentage of this circumference is a much smaller ratio difference than the ratio between the little circle and the little dot with the big circle. And so what basically happens is you go further away from gravity, this circle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and your profile size stays the same. And so that's why gravity gets away from you. So <clears throat> the ball of gravity is expanding, and you know the circumference, the sphere of gravity, so to speak, where the force is going out, the radiation is expanding. And as it's doing that through divergence, <laughs> um, your profile relative to the new sphere at the distance you are from the gravity makes you smaller and smaller and smaller as a relative percentage of that circumference. And so that's why that's what this is, this, this inverse square thing. And that's basically what it is. It's, the, <laughs> the angle gets smaller and smaller as you go further away, it gets, the, the, the wedge gets smaller and smaller. So the wedge that is the circumference of the close gravity is actually shrinking as you get further away. You're, and when you're close to something, you are got a big wedge you're taking out. And when you get further and further away, this wedge just gets smaller and smaller. And it's this distance is the important different distance because that's the distance of the whole circle that is the gravity. So well, it's a sphere, so that's the that's why it's four times. But anyway, because you're losing it both dimensions, you know, both this way and this way, is my hand moves those two dimensions, I shrink. <laughs> so to speak, um, in terms of my capacity to impact them or be impacted by them. So anyway, we'll play a little bit of it. This Hoffa Day video just really annoyed me. So it starts off with him saying something like, this has been my shortest video. And then he says, I, you're not allowed to say something like Einstein says. First thing I'd say, well, here, I'll play it. Or I think I'll play it to see if it plays. Mm -hmm. It's not Einstein says. It's not Einstein's theory, it's general relativity theory. Yeah, yeah. and I, I don't need this lesson as every time I say something like Einstein says, I always qualify that with some description of the fact that his formula uh, is based on the inverse square rule or some statement like that that 
explains what element of what Einstein is saying uh, is the reasoning Einstein used. And so it's like with black holes and the rest of it, I explain that no one's explained how to compress matter. So, you know, these are all limitations to saying some theoretical, you know, theoretically it's possible. Yeah, well, theoretically it's possible that uh, unicorns fly. <laughs> you know, but first you have to find a unicorn. And then you have to find one that flies. Um, and until you do that, that theory doesn't mean anything. Obviously, Einstein's theories do mean something. So when you say Einstein says, these are verified, many of these statements by Einstein are validated with extensive evidence. Some of them aren't. Um, but clearly, when I'm using an Einstein says, I'm using it in the context that they're basing their own physics on these equations by Einstein. And Einstein's equations don't do what they say they're able to do with them. And until they can demonstrate how Einstein was wrong, they have no business doing it. I mean, really, you know, there, there is a limitation here somewhere. But I'm just saying for the shorthand of conversation, there's absolutely no point in me doing this all the time. I mean, I, I really shouldn't have to present a model and explicitly say, this is why it doesn't work. And Einstein knew of this existence. He knew of this relationship, that this circumference gets huge as you move away from a gravitational body. And this circumference doesn't change. And so obviously, the relationship in terms of the force absorbed or emitted is uh, substantially degraded. I made that explanation, so this is just a lie to sit there and say, I just go around going, Einstein says. I thought that's not what I do. You fucking liar. I mean, you disgusting pig of a human being. I mean, there's no other word for it. You're a fucking liar. It, I, I provide explanations, asshole. Oh. I mean, people are just such turd. I mean, you're just such a fucking piece of turd. Hmm. Oops, wrong button. You know what that did? <laughs> yeah, I meant to the space bar here. It's irrelevant now what Einstein said over, you know, a hundred years ago. Um, <clears throat> Well, again, it's not irrelevant to the relevant equations. All the equations except the existence of the inverse square rule. I'm not out of bounds by citing the fact that that's a fundamental character element of all gravity equations. So let's not play a game that there's some theory by some physicist out there that the inverse square rule doesn't apply. It does apply universally. It's irrelevant what he said. It's only relevant what the theory says. So stop. Well, again, a distinction without a difference. Obviously, when I'm saying what Einstein said, I'm not talking about what Einstein said about uh, little thin black ties. I'm talking about what Einstein says about the formulas and the rules he understood to exist that developed those formulas. So it's not Einstein says uh, about uh, you know what he thinks of cranberry juice. So another just complete bullshitism by this fucking asshole. I don't need your lectures, jackass. You're the one out of bounds, not me. Talking about protestations that, that you know, 80 years old, right? Yeah, yeah, Newton's even older. Those are perfectly valid relationships. The inverse square rule was noticed by, uh, well, even people before Newton. I mean, that one might go back to Gal Galileo. Um, and it's just the truth, asshole. Okay, it doesn't matter how old it is. You don't get, you don't, you don't uh, deny the existence of the round wheel because it's an old invention. Fuck you with this stupid argument. Einstein did not know, does not, did not know his theory as well uh, as it's currently understood. Uh, well, that's your now. You're making bold accusations. You're saying that there something they added to Einstein is in some way um, fundamentally correct. And I would argue that they haven't added anything fundamentally correct. And what they need to do is correct Einstein, fix the parts of Einstein that are wrong. 
So they're just piling crap on top of, of mistakes. They're not fixing Einstein. They're just going more further down a broken road. But there's, what, what augmentation to Einstein do you think is uh, uh, relevant? Do you think you've proven the existence of black holes somewhere? Proven? I, I mean, you know, you're, made, you're the ones with the, the claims, and you, you feel no obligation to prove them. You merely just say, we tend to like to believe. Well, that's, you know, we tend to like to believe is even worse than saying Einstein says. Uh, end of that point. Fuck you. I told you this before. Fuck you, you patronizing cunt. I mean, <laughs> I've told you before, you're a lying scumbag. You can't paraphrase, paraphrase any argument correctly. You're a quote mining little a turd of a human being, a weasel. You ignore context. You ignore the truth. I have told you this before. You have no character, you fucking scumbag. You're a lying piece of shit playing a weasel game. Fuck you. Outed. I see you, shithead. Second way. So all your Einstein points about gravitational lensing, everyone that relies on what Einstein said. <clears throat> Again, it's not what Einstein said, it's what Einstein believed to be the truth, what has was established to be the truth by Newton. Again, these are the elements of Einstein that are established by Newton. The inverse square rule isn't Einstein's invention. The invention of Einstein is applying it to photons. I say that's not legitimate in the first place, but the point is, is that physics has accepted that argument that somehow photons are accepted by the same gravitational laws, okay, that they fit into Maxwell's equations. I say they don't, and I say they have no evidence that they do, none but circumstantial. And the circumstance, as I've explained it, is that photons, you only find photons to have any of this character when they interact with an electron. And if they don't interact with an electron, you'll never be able to demonstrate any electric or magnetic component, ever. Because it's not part of their nature, it's part of an electron's nature. I've stated that explicitly. Oops, wrong keyboard again. Is worthless. Worthless. Says you. When you say, Einstein's, I have Einstein's math. What are you talking about? Einstein's math, Einstein's math, Einstein's math. You don't know shit about Einstein's math. Uh, that's another accusation. I obviously know enough about it to know that it's got much of Newton's math built into it. I certainly know that. I know the inverse square law is built right into his field equations. Uh, and uh, the only thing that uh, Einstein changes is obviously it changes the center of gravity. The, the 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 emission point of the gravity of the other body uh, affecting the other one. So that, that's where the the change in Mercury's uh, procession. Um, all of those equations are just really uh, equations that acknowledge that Mercury is moving the sun. Yeah, wrong keyboard again. If you mean the inverse square law, you mean Newton's law. I, again, Newton's law interpreted by Einstein. I, I can't argue uh, uh, the the only way lensing Einstein by Newton's law, Einstein said lensing would be impossible to see. Okay, so that's just the explicit truth. Okay, the truth is the sun couldn't bend light enough for us to see it, and it was only because of Einstein's addition of relativity and the fact that his, by his relativity theory. The photon by the photon's clock, it was in the it was in the gravity twice as long. So it was the fact that he could make the time element twice as big that made it possible for him to say that lensing would be visible because he could make it twice as dramatic in terms of the amount because he was doing it times two. That's a big that's big. Doubling something is big. Okay, that's a big difference. Twice as big is big. I make your fat ass twice as big. You're going to notice it, fucker. 
Yeah, wrong, <laughs> you're getting the wrong keyboard. Shut that shit up. <clears throat> Wherever that is. Shut what shit up. I guess that was it for his brilliant video. What you see, oh, here we go. When you see the simulated black hole move across something, you see all that heavy lensing around it. It's entirely dependent on where you are. Uh, so so uh, this is just a nonsensical argument. See, my argument is is that, and Einstein's argument is, if lensing is going to happen, it's going to happen here along the surface of an object because that's where the gravity is much stronger because the inverse square law destroys the strength of gravity dramatically four by a factor of four. <laughs> the gravity is so that's why I'm using Google Translate. I don't need crap in the room, Caleb. So what are you doing? We're not doing Google Translate in here. And uh, we'll just mute you for now and then we'll get eject. You know, I really, I don't really need whatever you're doing. <laughs> no, I'll just eject you. Don't come into my room unless you have something to say. And you have to say it without using Google Translator. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Um, anyway, so. Um, so Einstein clearly and Newton would point out that the further away you go, the less likely something is to be influenced by gravity. Gravity obviously gets weaker as you go further away and by this dramatic factor. And so obviously lensing could only happen on a surface um, if it was going to happen, the strongest gravity. So the point would be is around a black hole, they image black holes as moving across our field of view and it has nothing to do with where we're positioned. It just has to do with the field of view and the black hole being in the field of view. And all the stars behind the black hole that are moving out of its shadow and moving into its shadow would be deflected to the light by this gravitational lensing effect. And so for a perimeter of a defined thickness, there would be gravitational lensing. There wouldn't be lensing out here or out here or out here. It would be confined to a ring around the black hole. And that's how all the scientists I've seen, I haven't seen, I've seen no exception to this description. If black holes exist, this is what they do. Um, and that's, that's just the truth. Now, Hathaway wants to tell me that there's some reason I should believe that, uh, 100 light years away from this gravitational body, I can bend light. Well, you can't. <laughs> you can't do it next to the body, like I said. <laughs> you have no evidence of it. Um, there's Really, it's not a repeated experiment. Isn't that one of the rules? You have to be able to repeat the experiment. Well, they didn't repeat the Ettenberg uh, bullshit. So they've never validated the existence of solar lensing, let alone galactic lensing. None of it's ever been validated by science. At a certain position, that's what you see. Yeah? When you're 10 million mm -hmm. light years away, you don't see what, what, what you see. There is other lensing going on. Lensing that Pluto. Right? Not at the surface. Well, like I said, that just doesn't make any rational sense. To bend light, light's moving very fast. Gravity is an excel, is, a, is a, a, a velocity argument. Your affected by gravity is dependent. How much you're deflected is dependent on your time in the gravity, and that's dependent on your velocity. Light has an extremely high velocity, like preposterously fast velocity. Um, and it to be at all deflected by gravity, it needs to be in it, uh, you know, a sufficient amount of time. And um, even by Einstein's equations, if that time is sufficient right next to the surface, I'm still arguing it's 
doesn't happen because you can't bend light with a force. But regardless, there's no evidence, there's no rational formula, there's no nothing unless you introduce matter into the equation, unless you put some invisible matter into the galaxy, that there's any explanation for the lens images they show. They're not gravitational lensing images because there's no evidence that the that there's any gravity uh, empty space gravity gravity right next to a sun obviously lensing right next to a sun would be invisible lensing you couldn't it can't be visible lensing then <laughs> so a, a distant sun <clears throat> just because the number of photons compared to the number of photons in the sun is is not a it's not a good net equation <sighs> um you know just because of the fact that we can't resolve the surface of the distant sun the light is too diffracted and so it would consume any lensing if there was any 